Hey everybody, welcome to part 3 of the series in Static Structural Analysis for Beginners using Creo Simulator. In the previous videos, we looked at simple part level analysis as well as a simple assembly with couple of welds in it. Now, we are taking the analysis to a slightly higher level with combination of bolter joints as well as welds here. I am going to use this assembly that we are seeing right now on the screen for the purpose of demonstration. So I have created this assembly as a combination of bolter joints as well as welder joints. As you can see here, it has two identical beams on top as well as at the bottom. We have uh, two doubler blades which are bolted to each other. They have clearance holes which we are going to use as a purpose of demonstrating bolter joints. And there is a bottom plate that acts as a ground plate where we are going to arrest all these four holes assuming that they are the mounting holes of this tower and we have another doubler plate between this I cross beam and then uh, the top I beam here. We have a gusset here as a part of a reinforcement. So totally we've got eight bolter joints, four between the top doubler plate and the bottom doubler plate and then four here between this top I beam and this doubler plate that connects the cross beam. So let's get started. Before we get started we need to prep the model to communicate the solver that there are several joints in this model. First thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these parts wherever it is welded. So this I beam on top is welded to this doubler plate here and the bottom one is welded to this plate as well as to the mounting plate. And then we have two more welds left. So one will be the cross beam which is mounted to the doubler plate. I'm sorry welded to the doubler plate and then this gusset which is welded to both the double plate as well as this cross beam. So uh, for the purpose of demonstration and the interest of time I am going to demonstrate how the weld connections are set between one component as an example and you can follow the rest based on the same logic. So we need to go to applications and welding. The type of welder joint we are going to use is fillet. So I am going to click on fillet. You have to choose the base surface which is common between all the welding surfaces of the top I-beam then click on side 2 and select this. Sides here so I have picked all the relevant sides. Now I am going to change the weld size to 3 millimeter, which is going to remain common between all the joints. So I want a solid cross section so I am going for solid options here. So this is how you create a welded joint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform similar uh, procedure for all of this components here. So there will be an edit in the video in the interest of time. Okay, we are back. So as you can see we have created welded joints which are identical here and we are also created welded joints here, here as well as throughout this cross beam and there is weld in this area where the gusset is. Now that we have completed the procedure for welder joints. We have to repeat the same for the bolter joint as well but the procedure is slightly different to perform bolter joint connections. So we need to prep the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this double plate here, open it and I'm going to create points in space to represent to represent something that goes through the axis of the bolter joint. So I'm picking a point using this edge going to this dialog box clicking on on and if you click on center it will create a point at center. So what we must do is we must repeat this procedure. So created points all across the holes. So if you go to points display option and check the point display you will see all the points being displayed. Now what we must do is we must link this point in space to the geometry around here. For that I'm going to applications and simulate tab. You will see something like this rigid links. So in the interest of time I've already created these rigid links in advance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate one of these joints so that you can follow along for everything else. So I'm going to refine model tab and there is an option called rigid link in connections menu. So you need to click on this datum point, select these edges holding control so that it creates a rigid link for us. It is giving me a warning because there is already one rigid link there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the one. So we have rigid links across all the four points here. So this is how you create a rigid link. And we need to repeat the same procedure for this plate as well at the bottom. 
have done that in advance it is very simple it is uh, similar to what we done on the top one you can use it for your practice and i am also going to look at this plate which also has these points here so also created points at the center for these four holes i am going to simulate tab and you look at if you look at the connections option you have rigid links here as well same procedure not going to go in detail now and if i go back to the assembly we have got bolt holes at the back of this plate as well on the i beam so same procedure you need to go to point option to create all these points in space and don't forget to create rigid links as shown here same procedure repeat as per the previous one I'm going to close out of this now that we have created all these points to represent the bolted joint it is time for us to idealize the actual bolted joint as per solvers understandable form so what we must do is in, if we create a literal bolted joint it won't be computationally efficient as well as a sensible analysis from a solver standpoint so what we must do is we must idealize that bolted joint to something like this so here we have the actual, actual bolted joint we have a screw we have the nut for simplicity i have ignored the washers you know these two plates are getting sandwiched in between the bolt and the nut so we are idealizing it through something called a spring which is built into the creo solver so a spring element is set up in a way that it is stiff in all the axis like through the x y z it is very stiff so what we are going to do is we are going to extract the forces and we are going to manually do our bolted joint calculations in another uh, session so this is how the idealization is done so we are representing the bolt in terms of a simple spring or you can also use an advanced spring if you want to control stiffness in x y z directions so this is how it works going back to the assembly now we are going to create springs here so now go to application tab and simulate if you go to refine model option you will see something called spring i'm going to go to spring option here so it will get me a dialog box and from simple spring i'm going to go to advanced spring so click on advanced spring and from the references drop down you need to select point to point pair so we can select everything in one go i'm selecting point point pair so the order in which we select is very crucial here so you are holding control and selecting each point pair in an order 1 2 1 2 1 2 and one two. likewise we must create connections like this for all the points so in the interest of time i am going to put an edit in this video now and we can come back with all the points with springs created so we are back what i have actually done is i have created springs in each point so i'll go to edit definition of one of these springs to show how it's done so we went to this drop down and selected advanced we need to choose something called spring property for that what we need to do is choose this more option go to edit or if they if you do not have any spring property set by default you can choose new and uh, we are going to choose a stiffness that is very stiff i'm going to choose something like 1e12 1e12 is 1 followed by 12 zeros so that our link remains very rigid so i have already set the spring property clicking okay and the direction in which you are going to choose your y vector is very critical always remember this convention when it comes to creo simulate the axis of the spring is always x direction so i have chosen my y axis the y defined y direction defined by vector and world coordinate system x equal to 1 because i want the y axis of the spring to point towards my x axis on the world coordinate system as we look closer so axis of the spring is x and the symbol that looks like y is y axis and the other one is z axis this is how you set it and when it comes to this joint here there is also spring but this time i have flipped the definition if you go and see the edit definition so the definition has been flipped so from x equal to 1 i have shifted y equal to 1 which matches my coordinate system now the y is facing the upper direction vertically up like my world coordinate system this is how it works totally we have created nine springs in order to extract the forces from these springs i'll demonstrate for one spring which can be repeated for other ones we have to go to home tab and go to measures here in measures you will find an option called new in the drop down choose force and reaction at constant choose spring 
and uh, you have to define spring by clicking on this cursor here I'm going to click this spring here instead of magnitude I'm going to choose X click on OK I'm going to copy it edit it change the X to Y so that I can also get res results for Y direction force copy it again go for Z now we have created our measures at one spring for three different coordinate systems so that X acts as a axial force Y and Z are shear forces you can repeat this procedure for all the springs if you wish to so now that we have set up our bolted joint as idealized springs we are going to go to the next step by detecting all our welds for that we need to go to refine model tab weld detect weld features I am using detect weld features this time because all my welds are of same size I'm going to override feature settings I'm going to use steel low carbon weld size would be 3 millimeter I'm going to click on this assembly so that it detects all the welds in my assembly I'm going to click OK so before we move on to our next step which is meshing I'm going to go to home tab and go to model setup and ensure the default interface is free or else since we have a lot of components there will be unwanted bonded interface between different parts so we don't want to do that we just want our connections to be set intentionally going to go to refine model tab click on review geometry to see the welded joints here as well as the bolted joint the brown ones you see here are the rigid links we have created for points so we can mesh our model now and see how it works so this is our mesh right now what you need to keep in mind is that during meshing when you see the result there should be common node in between your weld as well as the parent body so I'm checking that looks good so I'm moving on to the next step to perform material assignment to assign materials we have to go to home tab material assignment click on the assembly here go to components and then set the material click OK so that the material has been set so it is always recommended to set material at the level which we are performing the analysis so that nothing gets missed out that is done so we've seen the mesh we have set up the connections and we have already assigned the materials now it is time to go for constraints and loads so I'm going to pick displacement constraint I'm going to fix these four holes and I'm going to arrest these in XYZ decrease of freedom in translation and rotation can be left as such because solid bodies don't need to be constrained in XYZ rotation translation is enough I'm going to click OK here now in order to apply a load I've created a point in space if I look at it from the front view so it is right below this edge where the beam is ending so this is going to be a point mass which we are going to assume that is loading this cross beam here for that what I'm going to do is going to go to refine model and assign a mass for this point so I'm going to assume like 100 kilogram kilogram to connect this point mass to this beam I'm going to use a weighted link so for the dependent side click this point for independent side I click this edge now we get weighted link between the point mass and the edge of this cross beam so now we have applied constraints here it is time to go for gravitational load to find the impact of this mass going to click on gravity choose grav here since I'm going to apply gravity in vertically downward direction I'm going to choose y axis negative y let's apply say 2g for the sake of exaggeration so the downward direction is indicated by this arrow here 2 times gravity now we are all set to run our analysis to run the analysis go to analysis and studies file new static I am going to call this weld structure analysis make sure you have checked this constraints and load set I'm going to use single pass adaptive values always you can either hit run start or you can directly hit the green flag yes I want interactive diagnosis 
So the analysis has run pretty quickly as this is a fairly simple model. It's not simple compared to the previous one, but it's fairly simple. So I'm going to close out of this diagnostics window. Click on this result tab and go to view results. First, we are going to see displacement as always. Look at deformation based on the load path we are expecting to see. Show element edges, animate 16 frames per second. Yep, that looks better. So this is how the beams or the structure should respond to our load. So we had a mass hung down. This is how is it going to respond. Looks good to me. Now I'm going to copy this window. So you have to go to home tab and click on copy. The quantity, set parameter stress, one misses, don't want deformation, show element edges. Okay, and show. So this is our stress plot. So in order to get some idea of this, what I'm going to do is going to go to format, edit it, and to set the legend from zero to say 350 MPA and change the color scheme a little bit for better contrast. Okay, now oh, it looks better. Okay, so we can see stresses at both constrained locations where the springs are as well as at the welds. Since we kept some meshes at the top level, you can go to home tab and look at the meshes of it. So if we come down, there is measure one, one copy and copy on copy of it. So we have got the forces in terms of Newton here. So this is the force that's acting on the spring. We can use this force in different directions, X, Y, Z as we defined it and put it in another solver to you know analyze whether the bolted joint integrity is enough to pass this uh, structures requirement that is how it's done if you want to look at the p level you can hit copy good quantity p level okay and show so the solution has fairly converged at all points we are not having p levels beyond six or seven here we have mostly settled with p level five this looks good. So this is how we perform a static structural analysis for a structure that has both bolter joints as well as welds. So we'll be covering uh, in depth about how we can idealize it even further. Instead of using solid elements, how can we use shells and shell pairs? And then how we can idealize this weld. Instead of solid weld, we can also use mid-surface meshing to create welds and how we can probe and uh, how else will, can we analyze the boulder joint in a separate video. So thanks for watching. In case if you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments. And I've also added the CAD model of the source file so that you can perform similar analysis following my video here. That's pretty much it. And uh, we'll catch up in the next video. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.